Hi friends, it's another week and I'm happy to welcome you back to another weekly edition of QT videos brought to you by dataplatformcentral.com. So in this week, we are going to look into an Azure Synapse clip, particularly about how you can integrate your Power Apps data close to real time with your Synapse workspace. And this uses a feature which you have already seen one of the previous videos, which is Synapse link. So previously we had seen a video where we could use Synapse link to link your Cosmos DB workspace to Synapse. In this illustration, we are going to see how the same feature works with Dataverse. So for the sake of this week's illustration, we are going to take a power app and a table in Dataverse, which sits on the background. And based on the data that you are entering through your Power Apps, the data from your Dataverse table will be linked close to real time with your Synapse workspace. Then we will go ahead and add a Power BI report, which will make use of this Synapse on demand SQL pool and access this exposed table from your Dataverse. So, effectively, you will get data close to real time in your Power BI report based on how the user enters the data through your Power Apps. So let's see how this close to real time scenario works with Power Apps on one end and Power BI on the other end utilizing the Synapse link functionality provided by Azure Synapse Analytics. So let's go straight to the illustration. To start off the illustration, let's go to powerapps.microsoft.com. Once we go to powerapps.microsoft.com, we'll be taken to the home page. Inside that, we can now sign in with our username and the password. Once you sign in in the home page, you can see the apps. So I have already a created app called Order Customer Capture. So if you go inside the app, you can see that there is a form through which we can enter order customer details. It's a very sample app and we'll be using this app to capture the data to our Dataverse table. So this app uses a Dataverse table on its backend to for storing the data. So now if you do a trial run of this app, you can see that you can add some customer names. So I'm just putting some customer name like say ABC test. And I'm putting the age as 20 and the gender as male and just a sample address and then a sample phone number. And when I click on tick, the application is going to store this data and you'll be able to see the data in the preview. So you can see the ABC test that you have added now and it will have the ages 20 and the given address. So now once that you have added this, now if you go to your backend and if you check the backend table inside Dataverse after saving this, you can go inside Dataverse, go to the tables, you can see that there is a table called order customer details, order customers. This is the table which shows the data associated with your application. So we are going to now publish this data using Synapse link. So if you go to the data, you can see the data that is being entered. So you can see that there is one data which is entered at 12.40 p.m. which is around the same time. This is the data that we got entered now. So now what you can do is like now that you have found out that there is a table which is capturing this data, we are going to go to the table details and we are going to link it using a Synapse link. So for that purpose, so go to your database tables and prior to enabling Azure Synapse link for the table, you need to ensure that the table has track changes enabled. So this is a property which will help Azure Synapse link to continuously track changes happening in this table and push it to your Azure Synapse workspace. So go to the table and inside that you have the settings. In the settings, go to advanced options and make sure that you have track changes enabled and click on save. Only when you are doing this, the table will be available for selection while you are trying to connect to your Azure Synapse. Link. So once you have saved that, you can now come to the table. Just go to the tables and select the table and you can see the Azure Synapse link option here. So now we are going to link it to a new Azure Synapse workspace and we have already set up a workspace for this purpose. So we will be linking it to this workspace. So for that purpose, click on connect to your Azure Synapse workspace checkbox, select your subscription and in the resource group, select your resource group. This is the same resource group to which your Synapse workspace is also linked to and make sure that the region is also same. It's UAE North. They have already specified that your environment is here and the storage account should also be in the same region so that 
you does not inquire much data movement charges and also the latency will be less if both of them are in the same region now automatically it selected the synapse workspace as well as the storage account for you because that's the only one which was available inside your resource now click on next and this is where you need to check for the table name so if you check you can see that there is auto customers which is already set so click on save now what will happen is that on the background it will set up the synapse link and once the synapse link is set up you can go to your azure synapse workspace and check for it this table will be available inside your workspace wait until the linking is complete it will do a lot of steps whilst it's doing you can always ensure that you have the required permissions it's clearly listed out in this article which says that you need to have the synapse workspace and storage account must be created in the same region which you already found out you should have reader role access within the resource group then you need to have a database system administration security role and then finally you should have synapse administrator role access and the storage blob data contributor role in addition you need to also have the honor access within your storage so if you see that you should have the honor and the storage blob data contributor within your data lake storage so you need to one time go and check this within your storage account which is associated to your synapse you can see that my user has an honor as well as a storage blob contributor role within that and in addition i am also a admin within my power apps and also once you do this automatically the synapse link service will provide itself the required access this is the synapse link service export to data lake it will be given honor access storage account contributor access blob data contributor and blob data honor access so all this will be automatically done by the system these two things you need to ensure you need to have the honor access as well as the storage blob data contributor role so once it is done now if you go back you can see the both the links this is the new link you added this was the earlier link so i'm going to use this new link so i'm selected in the new link and you can see the tables and the details inside that so the link is now created and you can see that you have only exposed your order customers table which is the table used by your application so now can you go back to the demo workspace and if you just refresh it a bit within your synapse studio which is linked to your power apps you can go to the workspace you can see that automatically a lake database is created this is a fresh synapse workspace which it had nothing it now added a lake database and inside that lake database you can see that the name of the lake database would be the linked name for your database so it will have your unique id and inside that you will be able to see this table which consists of your order customers so this will be automatically created by the synapse link and now if you go and check the data inside you can see all the data which is present inside your main table so all this data are the data created by your application so you can check that it will contain the details of whatever you have added see the cr37 fields these are the fields that you added so the address that you sent the name of that person the customer name all the these are the ones you ended in your application you can check it against your application go back to your application and run it and you can see now do a test run you can see see there is like a customer called preeti manu see the same values inside your workspace see preeti manu so all the data that was present in your power apps table has been successfully posted to your azure synapse analytics now as you keep on adding new data you can just add a new data say i'm just going to name it like new data and the today's date so i'm going to put it like say 2022 and uh, 417 and just putting the time also okay so 13 26 just to identify that i'm just putting some age say 26 and the gender as say female and you can see that in some time this data will be available say some address here and some phone number and now i'm saving this and this new data will be automatically saved inside your application now after a while you can see the same data inside your azure synapse so let's now look for that customer name there customer name equal to the name that you entered so the name of the column is cr37e customer name and i'm going to put the same value so new data this is the name of our customer that we have created now so you can keep running the query and after a while you will be able to see the entry for your new customer that you have added so you can see that this is the new customer that you added through your application and the data is now available inside your synapse workspace so you can check the name the main important uh, data that you entered the name of the customer the, the gender all the different fields that you add through your application 
will be available inside your Synapse workspace. This is the customer name that you entered. Then you can specifically look for the CR 37 column. C26 is the age. Then if you want to see the phone number that you put, you can see the phone number, the address, all the other details can be found inside your Synapse. So what happened on the background was that it the Synapse link service pulled your table which was enabled and whatever changes happened in that main table which is your order details table, it pulled into your Lake database tick. So now that this is available inside your Synapse, what you can do is like you can add a Power BI report to point to this Synapse and it is already exposed through the built-in serverless pool. So if you want to have a connection to your serverless SQL pool and use it within your report, you'll be able to get this data. So let's see how we can do that. Let's go to Power BI and let's connect to this sign in using the same user. So now you are inside Power BI. Now if you want or if you want to do it from your Power BI desktop also, that's possible. Just open your Power BI desktop. So the data keeps on uh, uh, arriving to your Synapse table as the application keeps on adding new data automatically. And it is made possible by means of this Synapse link. So let's go to get data. And inside that you can go to Azure, select Azure Synapse Analytics. It will ask you for the server. For the server, you need to take the serverless pool endpoint. For that, you can go to your Synapse Go to the overview page of your Synapse and inside that you'll have that serverless SQL endpoint. Just select this and then paste it inside and the database is optional so you can leave it. You can connect to it in import or direct query so we can connect to direct query so that we can see the changes as it arrives in your system and then you can click on OK. It will ask you for your credentials. Go to the database, enter the database credentials. So the username again if you want you can go to the overview folder and you can see the admin user. And you can copy it and paste it here and the password you can type and you can see that the database is now listed inside so you can expand that and try selecting the table and you will get an error like this this is because table is exposed through the synapse analytics but it is actually a lake database table so on the background it has a file system and thus power bi being an external application it doesn't have access to file system so to avoid this error, we need to connect to Power BI using the organizational account. So now that you have already tried using the SQL account, the credential would be cached inside your Power BI. So what you need to do is like you need to go to file options and settings, data source settings, and you need to remove that existing credential which is cached. So if you see, you can see the name of your uh, Synapse workspace. You just need to right click and clear the permissions. This will delete the cached credentials within your Power BI file. Now you need to go to get data again. Go to more and select the Synapse workspace. Go to Azure. Select Azure Synapse Analytics and paste your on demand pool. This will a SQL pool. Select directory. Click on OK. It will again ask you for your credentials. This time you need to go to Microsoft account and click on sign in. And automatically it will try to sign in using your organizational account. Wait for a while. Select your correct account and it will sign you in using this new account. I have set up the two factor authentication. That's why it's asking for my approval. You can approve it from your app. And once you approve it from your authenticator app, it will get authenticated. Now you can click on connect and now it should be able to connect and uh, you will be able to see all the data from your table. Now select your table inside and it will show you all the data from your table. So you will not be having any access issues because now you have logged in using your organizational account which has access to the file system as well as to the synapse workspace because you have already mapped it to the owner and as well as the block contributor roles so now that it got connected you can now add a row card and maybe you can try pulling in the count so you can pull the count of your order id just pull the id value here and you can make it a count and it will get the count of your rows and if you also want to see the details you can add a table and then pull in your the fields that you added name age address and gender and it will show you all the details that you have entered through your application so now that you have added this now because this is in direct query you can go to the page options and set the refresh refresh it every two or three seconds or maybe make it uh, three minutes every three minutes and now as you change your data it will keep on refreshing so now if you go back to your application and add a new data 
it will get added to identify i'm just putting data for power bi so that i'll be able to identify this data and i'm setting the age to say 23 and i'm going to set the gender to male and a fictitious address and finally the phone number and now i'm saving it here so it will get saved inside your application through that it will get saved to the database table and after a while you can see the data available inside your power bi let's see that let's go and check the power bi report in a while you can see the count changing to nine from eight which means that the column that you have added the row has been included within your report and you can see in that row that you can see data for power bi which is the latest row that you added from your application so as you go back and keep on adding more and more row to your application the rows will keep on adding inside your report based on the frequency at which the data gets updated so you can say just add one more row and then just put some age just put some gender put some random address and put some phone number and save it and this will get saved and then you can keep on monitoring your report and it will keep on changing from 9 to 10 and the new data that you entered also so what you have seen here is an end-to-end -end illustration where you change a application through that you are setting some data saving new data into your database table and by means of this synapse link functionality the data from your database table is getting automatically picked up by the service and updating your synapse analytics table which will be exposed as a lake database table on the background it is a file system but it is exposed as a lake database table and from the table you are just pulling it using the on-demand pool available within your synapse and you are showing the data inside your power bi it shows an end-to-end -end data visualization method which works close to real time as we speak the data now changed to 10 which includes your latest row. You see, you can see the row for PBI2. This is how the close to real time data updation occurs inside your Power BI report by means of this Synapse link feature. As seen from this illustration, what you have done here is that we have set up a Power Apps with a database table on the back end and we have enabled the Synapse link functionality from the Dataverse side so as to automatically propagate the changes from the Dataverse table to the synapse analytics workspace that you have set up and this table data will be exposed as a lake database table inside your synapse analytics workspace which we can then use inside our power bi by connecting to the on-demand sql pool the lake database tables are directly available inside your on-demand sql pools for querying we make use of this and query the table from within your power bi and create the report on the fly. So this can be used as a good option when you want to get close to real-time reporting inside Power BI based on the data which you are adding into your database, either through an application or through any other means like SharePoint list, etc. Hope you found this useful. As usual, feel free to share your comments, feedback on these videos. If you are seeing this for the first time, remember to hit on the subscribe button and uh, click on the bell icon to get notifications. Meet you all soon with another useful quick tip like this next week. Till then, bye and thanks for your time.